from the Hainan International Convention and Exhibition Center in the Hainan province of the People's Republic of China. Folks, once again, this is your host, Steve Kim, joined by former manager and our ring announcer pulling double duty, Steve Munisteri. Steve, first of all, we gotta stop meeting like this. Well, I have a feeling, Steve, we'll be meeting like this more often as China becomes more and more important in the boxing community. And we'll see if we have a few prize fighters. Our featured attraction for the IPBU World Flyweight Championship being contested by Mai E. Ming and Albert Alcoy of the Philippines. Let's be honest, do we know anything about these guys? Well, we have a little bit of information. We know from their records they look like they're solid folks, but we'll be watching with interest as the viewers will be. Now don't go away. We'll be back for the official introductions in a moment. Let's take a look at this matchup for the IPBU World Flyweight Championship being contested by Mai E. Ming and Albert Alcoy of the Philippines. Height is just about the same. They both weighed in at 110. Slight reach advantage for Alcoy, and he's also 29 years old. Mai E. Ming is 32. So there you have it. Both fighters getting their instructions from referee Tony Weeks. So here it is, 12 rounds for the IPBU World Flyweight Championship. And you hear the bell, we begin round up number one, and Alcoy with the white trunks with the blue trim, and Mai E. Ming with the black with the red flames. And you notice immediately, as Steve Munisteri rejoins me ringside, is that we have a southpaw against an orthodox here, Mai E. Ming being the left-hander. And I think he's been most effective by just doing a right hand with a left hook. Oh, and then I think you heard Alcoy there. Look how tough Alcoy is, though. He's, he's coming back on him. Good, it's solid back-and-forth action here between Mai E. Ming and Albert. Oh, he's just how my Hand. He caught Mao Yi Ming. That was a counter yeah. right hand right from the shoulder by Al Koi. Sneaky as Oh, ever. an uppercut came behind it. There was a right uppercut. Mao Yi Ming, uh, I think, got the worst of that exchange. A third uppercut. Mai Yi Ming has been counterpunched effectively here in round number three, and now he's reeling just a tad. Albert Al Koi letting it go with the left hooks and the right uppercuts right down the middle. And oh, another the good left, left hook yeah. and a right uppercut. And now he's pushing him through the ropes, and he came back with a right hook to the head. Albert Al Koi right on the chest of Mai Yi Ming trying to fight his way back off the ropes. Left hook to the body again by Alcoy, then a sweeping uppercut to the body. Counter in return by Mai E. Ming. Very good action here in round number three. These are two tough fighters, and that this Alcoy is, is really a tough guy. I think Mai E. Ming is recovered now. But I think you have to give the round to Alcoy. Well, maybe not. Well, <laughs> Mai E. Ming not, with a couple right, of good, that, oh, great that, left hands. might have won in the round. Now, oh! We got a knockdown to end round number three, and I think that puts a capper on the round to Al Cole. Tony Weeks giving the mandatory eight count, and we have a shootout here for the IPBU World Flyweight Championship between Mai E. Ming and Albert Al Coy. Let's take a look at some of the stuff going on in the corner. I think there's a lot of maintenance that needs to be done by the corner as we head into round four. Steve, it looked like Mai E. Ming was in complete control. All the momentum's on his side. But we talked about just how pesky Albert Alcoy really is. Yeah, pesky to the point that he had some bite, which was that he, <laughs> la he, he landed some very effective uppercuts. I don't think Mai e. Ming has an answer to those uppercuts in close quarters. And what Alcoy did is behind those uppercuts, he came back and he threw some hooks. And the shame for uh, Mai e. Ming is, even if he was going to lose that round, it was still a close round. He got dropped right at the end of the round. So if he was going to lose a round 10-9, now it's 10-8. And arguably, he still might have won that round. So that's a two or three point swing there. It was a right hand over the top. Countering from the ropes was Albert Alcoy, who has been a very tricky opponent here for the Southpaw from China. Mai E. Ming. Again, they are fighting 12 rounds for the IPBU World Flyweight Championship. Well, and the, the fact it is 12 rounds, I think, is to Mai E. Ming's advantage. Right as I say that, Albert Okoy just, just rips a five-punch combination on Ming. But, you know, Ming needs to recover here, and, and, and he has a few rounds to do it. Uh, oh, 
good left hook there by Al Coy. But we'll say this again, Steve. When fighters are chest to chest, I think it takes away some of the southpaw advantage that Mai e Ming may have. And you see him getting worked over by on the ropes by Al Coy. Well, not only that, but uh, Mai e Ming, when he's in that position, he's he, he's fighting square, which yep. you know means that there's really no difference between being right-handed or left-handed. And now the tide has turned, and now Mai e Ming has things turned around. He has Al Coy up along the ropes, landing. Oh, he landed a three-punch combination. Oh, good. Six. Mai e Ming. Seven. Wow. What action, Steve. Great back and forth. Oh, he lands another left hand. Straight oh, left hand. Coy's in trouble. They both land almost simultaneously. There's a lot of action in this fight, Steve. Good right hook by Mai e Ming. And I think there was a nice little chopping left right behind it. Now there's another right, Steve. Well, this has quickly become a war of attrition. Both men going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Who has the advantage? Both men winging leather here in round number four. Right hook again by Mai e Ming. And down goes Al Coy. Yes. Although, I don't know if there actually was that much of a punch there as it was a slip, but if there was any contact by the glove, you know, then if he was, if it didn't take much to knock him down, then it's a knockdown. Well, there it is, a mandatory eight count from referee Tony Weeks, and it looks like Al Coy seems to be fading, but I wouldn't count him out. There's another right hook from Mai E. Ming. Mai E. Ming looking to finish this fight. Both men letting it hang out here in round number four. But Al Coy actually landed a counter hook there. Oh, but now he's in trouble, Gal. Al Coy is really in trouble here. Al Coy now staggering, not much coming back in return. Mai E. Ming trying to pour it on here in round number four. Both men have been hurt. Al Coy has been dropped, as has Mai E. Ming. Al Coy did a smart thing in grabbing and holding before. He might want to do oh, it. Oh, there's a sweeping left hand. Down goes Al Coy. That might be it. He's on his back. Is he going to get up? Tony Weeks giving the mandatory eight. Al Coy staggering. He's bloodied. Are they going to allow this to go? I think he they is. They do. That's one tough Filipino. Yeah. Oh, and he actually tries to land a counter right coming in. So my E Ming trying to put the finishing touches. There's a left hand that just misses, and a left hand over the top. Oh, 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 he landed right one. Hand. Oh, he landed another one. So wow. It. What a round. Round number four is one to put a star next to between my E Ming and Albert Alcoy. But what I wouldn't want to do is, is, is have a breather round to let Albert Alcoy uh, have a chance to get his legs and head back about him. Just don't be reckless. Come in, you know, keep a tight defense, work behind the jab, pick your shots, but keep the pressure on. Oh, that's and exactly that's what, what they're doing. doing. They're going face to face against each other. Mai E. Ming coming out very assertively, but Albert Alcoy as game as ever here in round number five. Again, in round number four, Alcoy dropped twice, but still landed his share of leather counter against Mai E. Ming, the Chinese southpaw. And both fighters, I think, are, are having a little bit of fatigue set in. Oh, that's a good right, was that a good that right, hook? right hook? That is a blind spot for most right-handed fighters against southpaws, and that's been effective the last couple of rounds for Mai E. Ming. Mai E. Ming now starting to stalk Albert Alcoy. Alcoy may be getting hurt more and more here, and he's up along the corners. You see Tony Weeks looking, and you see him staggering once again from the two-fisted attack of Mai E. Ming. Well, the Chinese crowd seems to be really getting behind Mai e. Ming. There's a left uppercut that actually gets through from Al Coy. Al Coy, though, seems to have lost just a little bit of steam on his punches, and there's two misses there from Mai e. Ming. Well, I think Albert Al Coy was really hurt that last round, and, you know, it may take him a round or two to get any starts back in his punches, and that's presuming, you know, he doesn't take a beating again in the next couple rounds. If I was Albert Al Coy, I would just try to take the next couple rounds and just regroup, grab and hold if I have to, move if I have to, try not to get into too many exchanges because, you know, he really had uh, a real whooping put on him for yeah. about a round ago. You know, Steve, as you see this fight, though, you can almost see the physical strength really starting to impose itself on Ming, on Al Coy. He's starting to just look like the bigger physical specimen in there. Uh, I, 
I, I think he is the stronger fighter. But you notice here, Al Cole, it looks like he's, you know, finally, he's got, he's got his, oh, well, that right as I said, it looked like he's got his legs yep. back. He almost did a pirouette. But it looks like Al Cole is uh, clear-headed now and he's got a little bit of his legs back under him. So, uh, you know, we've got a lot of rounds to go. No telling what's going to happen in this fight. We've already had three knockdowns. My E. Ming comes into this fight as a streaking fighter, took some losses early in his career, currently on a five-fight winning streak. You see again now, Al Koi up along the ropes and the corner. Good body shot by Mai E. Ming with the left hand. So Mai E. Ming trying to close the gap, impose his size. And you can start to see the legs of Al Koi starting to fade a little bit. Looks a little bit more unsteady on his pins than he did in the previous rounds. A part of it might, might be the twice he's hit the canvas. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Because you, you, when you hit the canvas, you, you've probably been concussed. So, you know, you actually just may not, may not all be back there. Oh, look and at And we that. got a timeout now. I think Tony Weeks is going to call for the ringside physician. The There's a cut over the right eye of Al Coy. And I think this fight may be in jeopardy. He's already taking a lot of punches. And now you take a look at the ringside physician, taking a very close look. And I think they may be waving this off. And, Steve, that's exactly what it is. I think this fight is a now a TKO in five in favor of the Chinese Southpaw, Mai E. Ming, who had to walk through a little bit of fire against a very gutted competitor in that man, Albert Alcoy. And this fight was an absolute barn burn. Around four, one of the very best action-packed rounds you'll see this year. And what a fight this was. And this was not easy, but finally beat up a little bit and then bloodied. On the advice of the ringside physician, this fight is halted, and I believe that it'll be Mai E. Ming who will be ruled a winner via TKO in five rounds. All right, lots of stuff to talk about. We'll go up top to our ring announcer for the official word, and we'll have more boxing coming up. This is Fight Night in China. Welcome back to the Hainan International Convention and Exhibition Center. All right. Well, we've had a lot of fireworks. Let's get to the festivities. Let's wrap it up in this great battle that was between Mai E. Ming and Albert Alcoy. So there you have it. That was hard earned by Mai E. Ming. He had to walk through some fire and he ate some leather against the tough Albert Alcoy, who simply would not go away easily. So there you have it. He is your new IPBU Oriental Flyweight Champion of the World, Mai E. Ming. And we come back, we wrap it up here on Fight Night in China. Okay, Steve Kim and Steve Munisteri back ringside. We're still catching our breath. What a bout for the IPBU Flyweight Championship of the World. Albert Alcoy was game but outgunned by Mai E. Ming. Round four was one for the books. Well, we saw a war. We saw two fighters both went to the canvas. And the thing that I'm impressed about with Mao E. Ming is he came off the canvas to win the fight. And it was a tough fight, and I think it was one of the most entertaining fights I've seen this year. Yeah, absolutely, and things were only getting heated again in round number five, and there was a cut above the right eye. And at that point, the fight was waved off by referee Tony Weeks. But still, what a capper. Uh, 2012 has seen some great fights in the game of boxing. You know what, I don't know where this ranks, Certainly a small gem between Al Coy and Mai E. Ming. Well, it was a fairly evenly matched bout, which I think is, I think folks in the boxing community need to take note of. Put together, good evenly matched fighters that are there to fight, and this sport is very entertaining. Put together mismatches or folks that are not there to fight, and that's a, a, a sport in decline. What we saw here in China, I think, is a sport on the rise, and this fight certainly helped. So there you have it, the battle between Mai E. Ming and Albert Alcoy. So on behalf of Steve Munisteri, this is Steve Kim ringside from Hainan, saying good night, everybody.